Hi, this is Dave Philippi with FabCAD, and this lesson will be a second in a series on different productivity tips and tricks to help you speed up your drawing process. So, we started out the last lesson talking about using the right click. So, here's the situation where I'm going to draw a line, and I can either use the pull down snaps here or have my O snaps already set up here, for instance, like going from the midpoint. I'm going to draw a line say from the midpoint at this point here, but I want to go perpendicular to that circle there. So I can either do a pull down here or I can shift and right click and pick perpendicular to there. What's cool about the shift right click is I can draw perpendicular from, by if I draw a line and hold the shift key down and hit right click and go perpendicular and go from here, I can go perpendicular from that circle. Isn't that cool? Do the same thing on the rectangle. I'm going to draw a line, hold the shift key down, right click, perpendicular, and go perpendicular. But see, you notice I can go out in free space here. So if I want to draw something lined up with the top of that rectangle, I can just use that and start from here and draw my new piece over on this side. Now, let me zoom out a little bit. The other right click options. So I'm going to right click and do a quick select. So so say I wanted to just select all the hatches on the drawing. Instead of go down and have to pick each one or try to figure out what's what, I just click on the quick select and then pick the hatches for the entire drawing. Click OK and then they're all chosen just like that. Then I can go in and modify those. So that's a little shortcut thing there. Also another right click option is isolate. So I can isolate objects or hide objects. So if you have a big drawing, you've got a lot of stuff on the screen, and you want to clean it up a little bit temporarily, I can just hide objects like these. Okay, and then I can do my work and then go back, right-click again, hit Isolate, and then End Object Isolation, and then it brings them all back. Now, going back to the snaps, we also have some new snaps. So I'm going to draw a line. And I'm going to hold the shift key down and right click and go geometric center, or you could do the pull down. So geometric center, like for instance, I can write, I can draw something from the center of that rectangle. It can also be any type of polyline. So it'll depict the geometric center of that. The other cool snap is snap between two points. So being an order line business, we use that a lot. So we go click on the library here. And I'm going to go to my gates. I'm just going to bring in a little walk gate here. All right, drop that in there. Then I'm going to bring in a collar. So I'm going to go up here to the library. I'm going to go up here to the Lawler. Go to a collar here and pick, oh, let's just pick this little jewel right here. That's a half inch. That's what those pickets are, I believe, on that gate. So I just insert this block. Okay. You'll notice that the insertion point is right in the middle of the collar. So we'd want to put it in right in between these two lines here. So we just go up here and go snap between two points and go say from the midpoint here to the midpoint there and boom it drops it right in the center. So I'll show you that exactly how that works. So snap between two. I'm just going to draw a line. Snap between two points from here and here. You see where the line originates from? Comes in real handy in the ornamental art business because we deal with a lot of parallel lines in our business. Another thing that you run into, I'm sure, is putting center medallions in gates or uh, railings or any kind of fence panel. So you may want to fit it exactly between two pickets to cut down the amount of trimming that you have to do. So if I'm going to draw a circle, I'm going to do a two-point circle. So on this gate here, I want to go from this point here to this point there, and I've got the thing set exactly where I want using a two-point circle command. And then I'll offset that, say 0.5, to make my little piece, and then I can trim it. I have to explode the gate first, and then trim, and I'll use this as my cut line trim this out here. And then I've got my circle. Now, 
if I really don't have it in the right place, I want to raise it up a little bit. You know, instead of moving it and trimming and extending, I can just use the stretch command. So I'm just going to use the stretch command here. I'm going to put on ortho so I stretch it straight. And just make sure I stretch, get the area around where the circle attaches to the picket, and you just move it up and down wherever I want. Another drawing tool that's been around for a while is lengthen. So I'm going to draw a line, and I'm going to dimension it. So it's 4 foot 8 and 1 16th. So I want to go into layout tools and I'm going to use a lengthen command because I want to make this 5 feet long. So I click this and then I have a choice of delta which means whatever length. I can make it a minus 5 or minus 6 or plus 6. There's also total which is the default. So I'll right click and the total length I want it to be 5 feet, 60 inches. So I'll right -click and then says select the object. So I select the object and there it is and it's changed it to 5 feet. Another underused command is the offset through command. So here is a, here's a scenario here. Here's a railing and I'm going to draw I'll, I'm get my bottom bar for my step. But I want the I want the bottom bar of the stair railing to match with the bottom bar of the the landing rail. So I'm going to go over here and let me extend this over okay so what I want to do is I want to offset this line so it intersects at this point here so I just go offset and instead of picking a distance I just click through and I select the op object to offset and then I select the through point which is here so when I extend that right click boom hits right where I need it to be okay offset through any through point so if I want to offset exactly through that through point up there I go offset right click pick this and I want to offset to that point right there so when I extend that hits it perfectly offset through neat little tool a real powerful tool that I'm surprised how many people don't use it is the tool palettes so let me just show you on that let me click tool palettes well, you got hatches here first, which is you can. Nice thing about this with hatches, uh, let me just draw a rectangle here and bring in a. Say, bring in a hatch like that. Say you want to do a a, a square grid. All right. So first of all, let's find a hatch that's closer to what we want. So let's find, there's one, okay. Now that looks like it's kind of small, I can go in here and I can set the scale bigger. I can go in and make sure it uh, works from the center out, center it. And then if I like that, I can just click on this and I can edit, copy, go to the tool palettes, right click and paste and put that in right here and have that available anytime. Now we could also do it for custom, any kind of custom drawing. So like for instance you could create a, a set of your gates, different styles of gates that you have and just draw the frame for it, drag it in from your tool palette. So let me go over here and drop this in. Now, it may not be the exact size you need for the particular job, but you've got your starting point there, so you just go in and you may want to do something with that, or maybe you want to make it a little bit wider. But you do all that with the frame, and you've got it pretty much going along here. Let's make it like three inches wider. All right, and then you can start you know, using the offset command and start building your own frame. Now, if you have our program, you can just click on the gate program, and I'll import a template here. Uh, for our materials, a standard gate, click OK, and use custom sketch, click draw, and I'm just going to use the settings I have here for this, and draw, and use the default spear, and just, and I'm ready to roll. And there's your gate, there's your cut list. So I set this gate up. 
it was a block but when I, I set it up I give it a description I can also have it explode as it's inserted which I've done here so you can do all kinds of things with the tool palettes to uh, create a collection of all your different designs you can also like if you have a folder with a lot of different stuff in it like for instance if I wanted to I could go and right click on this and I could create a tool palette of all this whole blocks this whole thing right here automatic so if I do that I'm creating a tool palette right now that has all those collars in it automatic there they are and I can just drag and drop these in click boom they just come in just like that drag them in Other tools, like in the structural tab here, if you do any structural work, you can drag in one of these beams. And I click on this. This is a dynamic block. I click on this arrow right here, and I get all these different beam sizes. I just click on that, and it changes to the size that I select. That comes with the basic package for AutoCAD and FabCAD. Some other commands that are out there that you may not be using now. Divide and measure. So I'm going to just draw a line. Say a scenario that you're going to build a stair, and let's say it's got it's a it's a, a ten foot four finish floor. Okay, and you need to know how many risers you need, treads and risers. So say that the uh, maximum riser height is seven inches. So so how many risers are you going to need? Well, you can easily do that by using the measure command. So I click measure, and I select the objects. And the number of segments, so let's say is seven. So that's seven. Every seven inches, we want it to hatch off. So I just hit enter, and it gives me all these, these nodes. So the question is, how many are there? So let's erase, put a window around, erase everything but the line. There are 14 of these nodes, okay, which means that there are 15 risers. So we're going to divide this into 15. So we'll do a divide command to evenly space them, make it 15, and let's see what the spacing is. So the linear dimension, node to node these things are 6 and 15 16 okay so that's that's how you do that so it's easier to, so you know exactly how many risers you need and what the length is so I'm just gonna draw a baseline let's say 13 feet 5 or something like that you may be restricted by the floor plan 13 foot 5 so we'll divide this bottom line into 14 segments so we'll divide Select the object to divide and 14. So let's see what that distance is. Linear from node to node. Okay, 11 and a half. So there we have, and you just draw your line out for your first tread. Step node here. Draw a line for the node here. And then just move that up to the top. From this node to that node. Let's erase that dimension for now. And then just copy this. That base point there. Do an array. And we said there's 14. 14 enter. Boom. There it is. There's, there's your stair. Just using the divide and measure command. Very powerful little tool for layout. Another drawing shortcut is converting text into polyline. So say for instance, gate down here. Instead of putting a scroll design or something in the middle of the medallion, say they want to have an initial in there like the letter M. So let's go up here. Let me just type a, let's get a letter. And I'll just do a capital M. Close text editor. And I want to convert that to an AutoCAD entity. So I'm going to, the way to do that is 
we'll use the export command file export we're going to export a WMF or you could use the command WMF out so I'm going to save it as that select the objects and then do a file import or WMF in and pick that and then bring it in and there it is now that is the collection of polylines now what we want to do though we may want to get rid of all these intermediate lines in here that help create this text so I'm going to explode all this alright now we still have these other segments here so I need to explode everything again then we can erase there's probably two lines there yeah, it says two found down here at the bottom see that so yeah, there's, because they're overlapping I'll erase this there's two there and erase this okay and that cleans it up I can even use another command called join which is I rarely see used click join and join all this together I may not join it oh there it is it's all joined together then I can scale it up to the right size let's move it up get it close get it right and then I can send that off to the water jet guy or plasma whatever or to your plasma machine or whatever you've got send it save it as a WMF and then I can just scale it up and uh, then I could go in to with my tool palette go to my hatches and fill it back in like so show the customer what's going to look like I will caution you that some texts won't convert to WMF so you have to just be careful when you what what particular font that you pick because like this drawing layout this short this fonts here those do not export as WMFs but a lot of them do and hopefully you can find one that'll work for you so I hope these little tips and tricks will help you speed up all your drawing productivity and get you cranking out drawings a whole lot faster take care bye